If you are currently leveling up your Django skills with this tutorial, this tutorial is part of a free YouTube playlist. The link to the whole playlist is in the video description. Now, if you love this tutorial and playlist, then you might also like to check out the whole course, Django Database ORM Mastery on Udemy. The link to the course, which should provide the best price, can be found in the video description. We find ourselves in a scenario where we are automating the process of building a Postgres Docker container in preparation to then migrate our Django models to the database and then run tests. Now we need to make sure that before we migrate over to the database, all of our Django models, that the actual Postgres database is actually fully initialized within the container. This might be a good scenario to introduce Docker health checks. Health checks are a powerful feature in Docker that allow us to monitor the health of our containers. They help ensure that our services that are running within the container are running smoothly and we can then possibly automatically restart containers should our services fail the health check. Now, more specifically, a health check is a command that Docker runs inside a container to help it determine whether the application inside the container is running correctly. Here we have a Docker container running Postgres database. So let's go ahead and actually configure a simple health check. Health checks can be configured in the Docker file or the Docker compose file. We're here in the Docker compose file using the health check instruction. So there are four key parameters that we need to understand. So let's go ahead and just add the health check here underneath the volumes. So at this point, we now need to just specify some of the different parameters. So first of all, we need to run a test. Now, like I said, health checks are simply a, a command that Docker runs inside to determine whether an application inside the container is running correctly. So we need to run a command in this case for our Postgres database to check to see if our Postgres database is working as intended. Now the test is going to be different depending on what you're actually testing. So here in Postgres databases, we might build a test like this. So we specify first the command shell Simply put, this directive in Docker health check configuration will specify that the health check command should be executed within a shell. So now we can actually go ahead and specify the command. So here in Postgres databases, we can run the pg is ready command. Now, importantly here, we need to understand what this actually returns. So in the world of Postgres databases, there's going to be four codes that are going to be returned. A zero, which identifies that the server is accepting connections normally, which indicates that the, the database service is running correctly. And then we have three others, which indicates the different types of errors or statuses that the database can be related to the fact that the database might not be ready for us to connect to. Now we probably ought to also include the user to run that command. In my case, it would be Postgres. But like I said, this is going to change depending upon the application that you're running the health check on. Right, so that's the health check command that's going to be run. That's going to return some sort of status and we can utilize that to determine the health of our service in the container. So now we have some additional settings so what you'll want to start to configure is the interval. So let's just define that as say 30 seconds. So here, this is the interval between each time the health check is completed. So essentially this will run the health check every 30 seconds. Now we can also control the timeout because the command that we run may take a few seconds. So we ought to wait for it. So we do have a, a timeout. So let's just set that to something responsible related to the setup. So let's set that to 10 seconds. So here, this specifies that the health check command must complete within 10 seconds. Now this is a Docker container. It may be that the health check is completed before 
the database is fully initiated. So let's control also the retries. So we're going to specify retries, say, at three. So this simply specifies that after three consecutive fails, the container will be considered unhealthy. Docker will report the health status of a container as one of the three states. Starting, the health check is initializing. Healthy, the health check command is passed. And unhealthy, the health check command has failed. Okay, so let's see this in action. Now, if you're like me and spelled it incorrectly, don't forget there's an L there. And let's go ahead and run Docker. So it looks like the containers have been brought up. So what we can do now, let's go ahead and run a Docker PS. And what we should have now is an indication as to the status, the health status of our container. So you can see here that our container, which is running the health check, has a health of starting. Okay, so let's run this again. Hopefully this time the Postgres database has now fully initialized and you can now see that we have a status of healthy. Going back to our initial scenario, now that we have a health check in place, it means that we can potentially then wait for the container to start and for the service to be successfully initialized before we go ahead and run the migrations. Now, this was just one scenario of many scenarios where you would potentially utilize a health check. In this example, we ensured that the database server was ready to accept connections. You may utilize it to verify that a web server is running and serving requests or check if a web application or API is running correctly and responding. As I previously mentioned, Docker can automatically restart unhealthy containers, improving application resilience. We can utilize this information to integrate it with monitoring systems to get alerts when containers become unhealthy. And we can ensure that new versions of services are healthy before redirecting traffic to them, for example, or simply avoid routing traffic to services that are not already ready, reducing the risk of errors and improving user experiences.